Dennis, it's been a mixed bag of year for you with um, Jamie McDonnell winning the IBF title, them getting stripped and you two falling out, and now Stewie Hall gets that chance. How much pleasure will this give you if Stewie Hall beats Vusi Malinga? I think it gives me a lot of pl pleasure. It's, it's born out of, a, like you say, a bad situation. Um, the thing is, I've never had really a bad word with with uh, Jim McDonald. Progressed his career, mentored him for the last probably seven years, won everything, and all of a sudden somebody else gets in somebody's ear and uh, and we are where we are. Now he got stripped from the IBF, and um, but you know the great silver lining out of this is that Stuart Hall's going to fight for the vacant. Um, Jim McDonald was the uh, was the first kid in history from Doncaster to win fight and win a world title, and hopefully. That's what's going to happen. That's what, what's going to happen with Stuart Hall. He's the first kid from Darlington to ever fight for a world title, and hopefully, in the same year, going to be the first kid from Darlington to win a world title. When he took the Perales fight, it was a massive risk, and few people expected him to win. Yeah. And what, 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 what made him take that fight? There couldn't have been a lot of money in it for him. There weren't a lot of money, Steve. It's um, you know he had a couple of knockbacks. He'd, he'd, he'd fought and lost in a close fight with Jim Donald for the European. He'd fought and lost in a. Which, which he probably admit himself wasn't his best performance against Lee Askins. So where does he go? He's took what's happened in, in put it in perspective. He's took one step back and two forward, taking on Sergio Perales. It's a chance. Otherwise, he's just going to be fighting domestically. But he still fancied himself on the world scene, and you know he's took a great leap forward. And uh, it would, you know he was bob bobbling around in in the top ten of the IBF. And uh, hopefully waiting for an opportunity, but the opportunities come from themselves through the situation with Jim McDonald. So great opportunity for him, and uh, it's a fight he can win, Steve, as well. Yeah, I mean he is going to be the underdog, but but how tough? I mean it's winnable, but how tough is it for him? I think uh, to win any meaningful world title, the big four is you know you're going to have to be able to have to to dig deep. I had it with Clinton Woods, and uh, obviously uh, with Jamie McDonald, amongst other fighters that I've worked with. So I think that's what he's got in his uh, armour. Is he can dig deep. So he won't be found wanting, and uh, they're going to meet in the middle. It's it's it's, uh, it's a tough fight. These two kids are two two tough warriors, and uh, uh, there's not going to be no uh, fencing off. I think uh, they're both going to meet, and the strongest man's going to survive. Yeah, it's a fantastic bill with Paul McCloskey, mm. Frankie Gavin, and also you've got a heavyweight, Dave Allen. Can you tell us about him? He's, he isn't short of confidence, is he? You know what? Is you know when when it comes to boxing and being on the boxing scene, he, he like he's got his uh, altered ego. He's, uh, he, he turns into something else. Outside of boxing, he's one of the nicest kids. He's the sort of fella who'll take your grandma across the road and make sure she's all right. But when it comes to fight night or press conference, he, he's, he's never found wanting. He's, he's somebody that excites me. And uh, obviously, we've been involved in boxing for a lot of years and I've known you for a long time, Steve. And uh, this kid, I think he could be a bit special. And uh, he's, got the, he's got the attitude and personality. You know, with people like yourself who's going to bring that out of him, and I think he's going to be—he's uh, got—he's going to have that crossover. You know, and that's what we want in boxing. We want people, want non-boxing people to get involved in boxing, and you need people with personalities. You know, like Nazim Ahmed had got, like Ricky Atten had got. He got your non-boxing people interested in boxing, and I think Dave can do that. Is it good for you that he's being, you know, ignored while people talk about other heavyweights like Huey Fury mm -hmm. and Big Anthony Joshua? Absolutely, he's uh, what I say—he's he's, he's coming under the radar and. Uh, we're happy to do that, I mean, because he's only 21 years old and that's very young for a heavyweight, so it's going to be holding him back. After his second fight, he's wanting to get involved with the British title contenders and all sorts, and that's my job. Uh, I've got to hold him back. He's working with Mick Marsden now, so obviously Mick's a very experienced trainer and he said it as it is, so if he starts running away with himself, he's going to pull him back. So, um, And he's got he's got great support. His girlfriend's a level-headed lass and uh, she, she wears the trousers anyway. So it's just when he gets involved with boxing, when he puts his boxing shorts on and he gets in a boxing ring that he's in charge and uh, I think he makes the other fella pay for it. And finally, Paul McCloskey you mentioned earlier, he's first fight under Hobson Promotions. What are you expecting from Paul over the next 12 months? Well, that's one of the things I want to do. I want to speak to George at Queensbury and uh, together maybe we can uh, resurrect his career because you know he's a world-class operator. Uh, he, uh, he gave Amir Khan until he got cut all sorts of problems and uh, I think very quickly we can get him involved in a world title and uh, that's after this fight I want to sit down with George and see what, how we can progress him but obviously you know like he said he's no spring chicken but he's a fighter that we can move very very quickly into world contention so um, looking forward to that. And on the night of the show itself how are the tickets going? Uh, this is the first foot for Leeds and uh, 
um, because it's not a Leeds kid fighting for a world title, I don't think that matters. I think it's, I think the people of Leeds are going to want to come out to their fantastic arena, this fantastic venue that we've got here. Um, there's going to be a, a large contingent, obviously, coming down from the northeast, and I think together the acoustics inside that place, I think Pavarotti will be proud to be playing there. So I think Stuart Hall is going to play the part very well.